Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we wait for your second coming, we also wait for Christmas to come. Spare us, Lord, from our suffering. Replace it with peace, joy, hope and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has placed you and me on this earth at this time and in this place we know as Australia. Living in Australia along with the rest of the Western world, we are privileged to experience a lifestyle that many in the world do not get to experience. We have been blessed with prosperity that gives way to pleasures that people in other parts of the world would not even be able to begin to imagine. At this time, in this place, with this privileged prosperity and its pleasures, people are experiencing suffering at a level never experienced before. The pleasure, privilege and prosperity that is our expectation from life takes the prosperity, the privilege and the pleasure for granted. Rather than receiving these things as a gift with thanksgiving to God. At this time and place, we find that our pleasures no longer give pleasure. Our privilege reveals selfish partiality and our prosperity hands our pleasure, our prosperity exposes our poverty. We suffer at the hands of our pleasures to such a degree, people in other parts of the world would not even be able to begin to imagine. Advent is the season for hope and peace, joy and love. A season for waiting. A season for patience. A season to depart from the darkness and be delivered into the light of new life. And a season of expectation to receive and pass on the gift of forgiveness. John the Baptist came baptising with a baptism for repentance. There was expectation in the air. There was an expectation for the Messiah that he was coming. Israel and the Jews had not experienced any revelation from God for approximately 400 years. There was hope. and Where there was hope, one prepares oneself for what one is waiting. Expectation of the Messiah meant many were flocking to the Jordan River where John the Baptist was baptising, I should say, with a baptism of repentance. Over the course of 1,000 years, the Israelites lived in prosperity, privilege and pleasure and that was given to them by God through the likes of King David and others. But in the time, in the place of John the Baptist, this was all just a distant memory. The pleasures of Israel no longer gave them pleasure. The privilege given to the people of God had been lost. And the prosperity of God's chosen nation was taken and tossed about between the powers that overran them to the south and the north and to the northwest and the northeast. In this time and this place, you and I suffer the hand of pleasures that no longer please. You and I suffer the hands of prosperity 
that really does not prosper. You and I suffer at the hand of privileges that just enslave us. False gods, idols. Perhaps like the Israelites, it's time to turn from what's within to that which we have been without. And what is it that you have been without? Has it been hope? Has it been peace, joy or love? Instead of hope, our society today promotes and teaches wanting without waiting. We want without the wait. Patient expectation through endurance and encouragement, waiting for the fullness of time where a community wills one of its group to grow and mature is impatiently shoved out of the way. Growth and development are trampled along with fellowship and community building in favour of instant gratification. The problem is with this is that what is wanted is easily gotten. Easy come, easy go. The mirage of desire moves and something else is wanted. Impatience prematurely gets what it wants and wastes the unripe fruit. Fruit. Without waiting, one does not learn to be satisfied with what one has been given by God. Instead of peace, our society today promotes a peace that builds walls. When these walls are built by us in the name of peace, fellowship is broken and individualism ends up oppressing us. Our own individualism oppresses us. One ends up locking oneself in on oneself. We become slaves to the darkness within as we build these walls, we're stuck there, finding a whole bunch of loneliness and despair. It's everywhere in our society today. Instead of joy, our society today promotes sickly, sweet happy, happiness. In one's impatience, we can't wait for the fullness of time. So we eat the unripe fruit and it sours a second, it hits our palate. So we go looking for artificial happiness. Happiness is different to joy. Joy is built by people in community creating fellowship. Well, happiness can be celebrated by an individual without any outside influence. Artificial happiness is saccharine and extreme. And it usually, it's usually found to be a cover, a cover for deep loneliness and despair. Instead of love, our society today promotes unleashed desire. Rights revealing what is wrong with us in our society, while our wrongs are recognised as right. Love is no longer about sacrifice and service, but rather about satisfaction of the feelings of the ego. However, two things are experienced when love is centred on the self. First, confusion and chaos rules as each person's love competes for supremacy. And that usually happens with pride, that love is a competition of pride. Second, people seek satisfaction that's never fulfilled. The more one desires this kind of love, the more elusive it proves to be. So this for us, in the season of Advent, in this time and in this place in history, we find ourselves stuck between two competing realities. The hope, peace and joy and love of Christ's coming has been departed from and forgotten, because we've been taught this way, in favour of the advent of new and renewed human ideas. So what have we found then? Well, we found the advent of new and renewed ways to suffer. We might think that this is a terrible thing. 
It might be if it continues to deliver us into the darkness of ourselves. However, this is also the time and the place of great opportunity and true hope, peace, joy and love in its advent through Jesus Christ. Jesus stands at the door and he says, he knocks, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Every day and in every place, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, meets you in the suffering of those in our society. Jesus makes his advent to them through us, through you, allowing the Holy Spirit to bring sufferers to the advent of Jesus, suffering and death, for true hope, peace, joy and love. St Paul describes Jesus' advent of knocking and waiting in this way. He says, We who are strong and have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbour for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproach of those who reproach you falls or fell on me. That's from Romans chapter 15, just prior to our reading that we heard today, the second reading today. While we please ourselves, we follow in the way of the world, in the same way as did the Israelites. One suffers at the hands of seeking these pleasures, it's interesting how pleasure always leads, can always lead to suffering. Or where we find suffering is usually after seeking pleasure. But it's also a reminder that Jesus continually sends the Holy Spirit to knock on our doors, to enter and to forgive, to restore and return us through Jesus' suffering and victory on the cross to see in our forgiveness the pleasure of God to forgive those who have not the will nor the way to turn to the Saviour who suffered for humanity. And that's all of us. We can't come to God through our own efforts. We need the Holy Spirit. Just as those who waited for the coming of a Messiah in the time and the place of John the Baptist, we continually wait, continually wait for the final advent of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. As we wait for this most glorious and treasured advent like those in John's day, we allow ourselves to be prepared for Jesus' final victorious advent. Holy Spirit prepares us by leading us from our sinful suffering into the word of God, where we endure and where we are encouraged. This is also the place and the time in which Jesus makes his advent through you, through us. He returns us to his first advent where he saves us through our baptism into his death and resurrection. So, as we rightly suffer reproach for being in Christ, we know the reproaches of those who reproach you fall on Jesus. Paul points us to God and his word. He says, For whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in, in accord with Jesus Christ that together you may with one voice glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore welcome one another as God has welcomed you for the glory of God, for the pleasure of God. 
the pleasure of God, not pleasing ourselves, as he says just before these verses. The strange thing that occurs when God leads us from our suffering as a result of seeking our pleasures to suffering for the things that please God, we find ourselves waiting in hope, living in peace with joy and love. For those who suffer at the hands of seeking their pleasure, as well as with those who suffer seeking to please God, we find ourselves in a community. A community. As puzzling and as paradoxical as this might seem, in this Advent, this is the profound prosperity, privilege and pleasure God seeks for all who suffer within and also those who suffer without him. So may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all our human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our next hymn, during which a free offering will be collected.